Hey everyone, I chose to learn how to use a website called Digital Dialects. This website is a language learning website. It's completely free. Uh, it has ads throughout the page, which I assume are to offset the cost. There are 40 languages you can choose from, some very popular ones, including Spanish and French, some lesser known ones like Croatian, Hungarian, things like that. Uh, users can simply click the language they want to learn, and uh, once you click that language, it takes you to a different page with lots of different games and vocab lists and things like that. Um, so that's what the home page looks like. Uh, you simply choose the language you want and uh, you go from there. So I'm going to show you guys how it looks up close. As you can see, there are all these languages. Um, I went through Hindi and Spanish extensively, so I'll show you guys uh, just some of the differences uh, based on popularity. So when you click on Croatian, for example, uh, it has this many resources. It's still pretty good, a uh, good amount. When you go to Hindi, all right, it's a different, different looking page. Uh, and then when you go to Spanish, actually, there's a lot. Uh, Spanish has many resources on it. Uh, obviously, Spanish is a more popular language, uh, so this makes sense that they would invest more resources into this. Um, I'll go into the Hindi and show you guys just some um, a basic game, so colors, right? It takes you through, uh, so Hara is green, Hura. and if you heard that, uh, it, tells, it speaks it for you too, which is really nice, so brown, Narangi. Narangi. Uh, see, this is, this is an issue I came up with, uh, so Narangi is, uh, India has many dialects, Narangi is obviously, it's a Hindi word for orange, uh, actually in the part of India where I'm from though, we say Santra, so Santra is orange, but Narangi is also orange, uh, so that can be confusing for some uh, people trying to learn. But uh, for the most part, if you are in India and you say Narangi for orange, they will understand you. Bangani. Uh, so that's it, Bangani is purple. And then game. This is actually a Hindi word. I don't know what it means. Uh, it but it it's, gives you the Hindi language. So you have to translate that word instead of this word. So I'll just show you what the game looks like really quick. Um, let's just begin game. Nila. I know Nila is blue. Uh, you keep going. Pila yellow, uh, and so forth. Uh, as, you, as you progress through this game, it goes to two words at a time, and eventually it'll go to three words at a time. Uh, so that's about it. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint now and show you guys some of my resources that I found. Yeah, so this is it. Uh, you know, I chose to study Hindi. Uh, this is that screen we were just on. So this was another game. Uh, there's an animals here. There's a pig right here. That's Suwa in Hindi. A snake is Samp. A deer is Hiran. And this is one of those vocab lists I was talking about. So it has some good resources for being a free website. Um, so learning with digital dialects. So there's a high user interaction with this website. Um, in this corner right here is a Spanish game for clothing. It's a little more uh, sophisticated, I guess you could say. Uh, you can see here like a it's better graphics, uh, more more sophisticated. Uh, each game is pretty lengthy, and it, it teaches, I think it teaches vocab pretty well. Uh, that, that color game we were just on, uh, I played through the whole thing, and it took about 10 to 12 minutes, I'd say. Um, it's very repetitive. Uh, you, you go through the same things many times, uh, but it I guess that's how language learning is, so you have to go through it uh, repetitively to learn. Some games are more advanced, uh, some languages are more advanced, uh, they had better features. Um, let's go to the next one. So I found three sources uh, that talk about similar uh, language learning situations in this first one. Uh, it talked about collegiate students and they had a game interface to learn a new language. In the conclusion, uh, proved that students learn more through a game than through a standard language learning course we take in college. Uh, the game that these students participated in was uh, much more sophisticated than digital dialects. Uh, they actually go through a story. The game had like a story to it. You go through levels and, uh, you know, it was much more advanced, but the uh, just was the same. Like when you come to stops throughout the game and you have to answer like translations and things like that. Um, so the students improved their skills. A limitation of this study was that there was no long term data to uh, show that these students, after playing this game, uh, they actually retained the language long term. So that is something still to be studied. Uh, we're not sure. 
Uh, but I think digital dialects is a solid choice for a beginner learning a new language. There, there are many uh, resources available for free and uh, lots of words that you can learn, basic words and some more advanced words. And uh, as you saw, the Spanish one was actually pretty advanced. So in a second source I found, uh, it talked about a gaming software that was developed to teach members of the armed forces how to converse in Arabic. So what really caught me here was this was a source from 2004. So it was interesting to see that even back then, gaming was, uh, if not the best, uh, one of the best options to learn a language. Uh, you know, obviously for this situation, they thought it was the best way to teach a language to these individuals. Uh, so I think uh, I think this shows that gaming is a very uh, very realistic way to learn a language, possibly superior to more scripted options. Uh, if if these armed force individuals can uh, decide to learn via a game, uh, I think that's that says a lot. Uh, so digital dialects, uh, I'm sure it's not as advanced as that one, but uh, you know it offers a solid foundational lesson in languages. And, uh, you know, I think it can be definitely used as a part of a language acquisition plan. Uh, you get a solid uh, foundation when you go through everything on that website. In the third uh, source I found, it talked about children using the game, uh, using a game for a language. And, uh, you know, it, it showed that the game was really useful in learning vocab words and targeted language, language lessons. And it also increased engagement, which uh, makes sense as it's a video game. Uh, limitations in the study showed that the high interactive nature of a game actually hinders some vocab acquisition, uh, ultimately suggesting that not all games are equal. That was an interesting thing to me. I, I always assumed that interactivity was better. It helped you uh, be more hands-on and learn. But uh, I believe we discussed earlier in the class possible distractions uh, in the field of gaming uh, with technology or gaming for education. Um, you know, some students can get distracted uh, and simply try to get to the next level in the game uh, as opposed to trying to learn the lesson in the game itself. So I assume that's an issue with children. Uh, digital dialect seems effective. Uh, uh, once again, I think it needs to be supplemented with more advanced games or it, actual lessons uh, to fully for an individual to actually learn a new language. So using the tool, uh, so I actually volunteered at a technical college in town for about three years in the adult learning center. Um, the students I worked with were adult learners and uh, I, I spent most of the time with Indian ESOL students. Uh, these students were trying to learn how to speak English. They spoke very little, if any at all, uh, trying to learn basically English civic skills, things like that. I think this was the perfect tool. This would be the perfect tool for that group of students. It doesn't have to be only Indian students. It can be any like Spanish, uh, French. It can be any adult learners. Uh, but for my case, I worked with Indian adult learners. Uh, so the Hindi and English sets could be used for the students uh, to learn the language. Uh, the game aspect would help motivate them. They've been out of school for a long time. And uh, actually, they came from India. Many of them didn't even uh, have college education or 12th grade even. Uh, so I think this was a good way to get them interested in learning. Uh, it'd be the perfect addition to the classroom instruction. Uh, students could access the, access the website conveniently from home. Um, you know, I, I was a teacher's assistant in that classroom, and the teacher had note cards and uh, wrote on the board. It, it, was an, it was a good class for these learners, but it was obvious that when they left uh, that class, it was, it was three times a week for about three hours each session. And it was obvious they were not studying when they went out of class. It was just in class. They didn't have resources at home. Uh, they had more responsibilities. And, uh, you know, they weren't taking their notes home to study. So I feel like a game would be perfect, especially this game. It's free, so they don't have to put anything into it. Basically, all of them had computers or laptops. They could access the game, play a few sessions. It'd be fun. It'd be a thing the whole family could possibly do uh, with their kids or their spouses. Um, you know, they could learn language, play the game. And it, the competitive nature of trying to be better than the than they were before, I feel like that would definitely help them um, stay motivated in learning. So that's that's one uh, experience that I've had that I really actually wish I had known about digital dialects. Uh, it would have been super useful at the time uh, for those students. And uh, yeah, if if I had known about it, I definitely would have suggested it to the teacher to show to these students. 
Some limitations, uh, the website was very simple as you saw, which could be a negative for some users. Uh, with regards to the adult students I worked with, I don't think it'd be a negative. Uh, they seem more interested in the content than the graphics, uh, but obviously younger users might be, uh, they might lose interest uh, with the simple design. So the ads could be distracting. Uh, if you saw there were ads throughout the page, that, that's uh, somewhat distracting. Some languages are more developed than others. Uh, so if someone wanted to learn, say, Croatian versus Spanish, uh, Spanish was very developed and Croatian was not. Uh, same with Hindi. So uh, that's an issue. And I noticed some words from the Hindi section. I brought up that Narangi. Uh, it's actually different based on different dialects. Uh, Santra is another word. Narangi is what they use on the website. So the fluctuation in vocabulary could be confusing to some learners. Uh, but overall, I think it's very good and very useful, especially with uh, the students I've worked with. Uh, so that's it, guys. These are the sources that I found. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'm looking forward to watching everyone else's. Bye.